Nine months ago, I made what back then were the most advanced and expensive AI models, GPT-40 and Cloud Sonnet, compete to build the best stock portfolio. I gave each AI model a team of agents that could search Google, analyze financial data, and pick stocks in the sectors I was the most excited about. Nuclear energy, space exploration, AI, and blockchain. Each team of agents had a budget of $1,000 that they could spend on whatever stocks they wanted and in whatever amount they wanted. I have been tracking them ever since and today I want to share with you what the results are nine months in. So we can see which AI model is better at picking stocks. I run the system eight times total, four industries for each model. And the run cost me about $20 for GPT and $18 for Cloud. The results were fascinating. GPT-40 went heavy on NVIDIA with two separate positions. Cloud was more diversified. GPT picked 17 stocks and Cloud picked 14. Now, when I built this nine months ago, Crew AI was one of the only ways of building AI agents. But man, things have changed. Today, we have so many frameworks for building agents. OpenAI launched their agents SDK that supports Python and TypeScript. Google came out with ADK, their agent development kit that supports Python and Java. And companies like JP Morgan, Uber, and LinkedIn are all using Langgraph. Actually, I rebuilt the stock picking agent using each one of those frameworks to compare, but that's a topic for another video. The point is, it is becoming stupidly easy to build AI agents now, and the agents I can build can be way more powerful than the ones I built nine months ago. Now, this isn't some future thing. It's happening right now. Companies are deploying agents in production, handling real work, making real decisions, and they're all desperately hiring developers that know how how to build agents. If you know how to use each one of these frameworks, you are basically guaranteed a job. The demand is insane, and there aren't enough developers that understand agent architectures, tool calling, memory systems, and orchestration. Agent development is evolving fast, and you need to learn how to build these systems. And that's why I created the AI Agents Masterclass course. There, we learn five different frameworks. Crew AI, Autogen, OpenAI Agents SDK, Google ADK, and Langgraph. You will build over 10 real agents, including a YouTube Shorts maker, a thumbnail generator, a job hunter, and even a ChatGPT clone with voice support. You will also get a free bonus course where you will learn how to build no-code agents and automations with N8N if you buy the course before the pre-sale ends. Okay, back to our agents. The original system had three crews, research, analysis, and stocks. Each crew had a different agent doing basic tasks. The new system is completely different. I have a portfolio manager agent that orchestrates eight specialized agents, a sector researcher, to discover companies, a ticker screener to verify they are tradable, a fundamentals fetcher to pull financial statements, a valuation analyst to run multi-factor scoring, an insider ownership analyst to track institutional flows and insider trading, a risk analyst to build correlation matrices, an allocator to determine position sizes, and a trade planner to create exact buy orders. They all work in parallel and use tools like Y Finance, Fire Crawl, SEC Filings, Pandas, and more. I also built a UI with Streamlit to see the agents in action, their tool use, and the results in real time. There is an input for the budget, a text area for the sectors you want to invest in, and a select menu for which model to use. And after clicking build portfolio, I can get a view of what the agents are doing, the tools they are using, with which arguments, and so on. Now, after it's done, I can see the portfolio in the table format with explanations of why the agent picked the stocks they did. All this, by the way, you will learn how to do if you take the AI Agents Masterclass course. To build this system, I didn't use any concept or API that isn't mentioned on the course. Now, since I was already rebuilding the system from scratch, I also added a rebalancing agent that would look at the portfolio and suggest rebalancing if needed. Rebalancing meaning it will tell me what to keep, what to sell, and by how much. This is way more sophisticated than what I had nine months ago. It's like going from a bicycle to a Ferrari. The original system was like less than 500 lines of code. In the new one, the agent tools alone are over 2,000 lines. And there are also prompts, outputs, error handling, UI code, and more. Now, let me show you the portfolio results after nine months, the rebalancing agent's suggestions, plus a new competition with four new fresh portfolios generated using the new system by today's most expensive and advanced models. Cloud Opus 4.1, GPT-5, Grok 4, and Gemini 2.5 Pro. As a recap, here is the original portfolio that GPT-40 built. And here is the portfolio that Cloud Sonnet built. The GPT-40 portfolio was very NVIDIA heavy. GPT-40 chose to buy NVIDIA 
NVIDIA twice, one for blockchain and one for the AI industry. And the biggest position in the cloud portfolio was BXY Technologies, a company that manufactures and sells nuclear components. Now, on to the results, starting with the worst picks. The worst picks in GPT's 4.0 portfolio were only three stocks. Lockheed Martin was down 17%, Redwire Corporation lost 30%, and Marathon Digital Holdings dropped 37%. Cloud portfolio had four losers. Block was down 14%, Lockheed Martin showed up higher too, with the same 17% lost, Marathon Digital also down 37%, and then Virgin Galactic absolutely crashed at a negative of minus 55.94%. Virgin Galactic really hurt Claude here. That 55% loss is brutal. Now, on to the winners. Many of you are thinking NVIDIA is going to be the winner here, but you are all wrong. The best picks in GPT's 4.0 portfolio? Planet Labs, a company that makes satellites with cameras to take pictures of Earth, is up by a whopping 93%. Rocket Lab USA, a company like SpaceX that launches satellites, gained 90%. And Boeing, yes, Boeing, the airplane company, up 54%. Claude best picks were Rocket Lab again, with the same 90% gain. NVIDIA up 25% and Alphabet up 25%. Keep in mind that prices isn't the only thing that matters. Allocation is also important. For example, if GPT-40 only put 2% of its budget in Planet Labs, but 20% in Marathon Digital, that 93% gain on Planet Labs wouldn't offset the 37% loss on the much larger Marathon position. Keeping that in mind, with allocations in the equation, GPT-40's portfolio still beats Claude. Overall, GPT's 4.0 portfolio is up by 17.80% and Claude is up by 11.54%. Now, you could say that GPT's 4.0 portfolio win because it had NVIDIA twice, but that's not the case. Without NVIDIA in any of the portfolios, GPT's 4.0 portfolio will be up by 15.88% and Claude will be up by 10.62%. Now, let me show you what the rebalancing agents think we should do. But before that, leave it in the comments below what you would do. Would you sell, hold, or buy more. I am inclined to take profits on the winners and maybe buy more on the losers to average down. Let me know what you would do. The rebalancing agent's UI is pretty simple. I select the model to use, attach the portfolio, ask a CSV or markdown table and click on the rebalance portfolio. I can still see the live events and when it's done, I get a table with the rebalance portfolio. Now, here are the results after GPT-40 uses the rebalancing agent. The rebalancing agent wants me to take profits big time. But here's the interesting part. The agent is doubling down on space. It wants me to buy more of the biggest winners, Planet Labs and Rocket Labs, both showing strong growth and stellar fundamentals in the space sector. After Claude uses a rebalancing agent, here are the results. Claude's rebalancing agent is even more aggressive. It wants me to buy more of everything that's working. Rocket Labs gets under 2,000, Alphabet gets 3,000, and even underperformers like Cameco and Microsoft get fresh capital. The agent sees AI dominant and nuclear renaissance accelerating. But it is absolutely ruthless with losers. Sell everything. Virgin Galactic, Block, Riot Platforms, Marathon Digital, Lockheed Martin, all 100% sells. What's fascinating is that Claude's agent is basically saying, double down on AI and space and dump everything else. Cool conviction mode. Now, since there have been so many new models released, I thought it would be interesting to see how the new ones perform with the new portfolios as well. So rather than redoing the same portfolios with the same industries as before, I decided to make a new portfolio with sectors that I'm really interested in nowadays. Silver miners, copper miners, natural gas, tanker and shipping companies, sink miners, uranium miners, and emerging market banks is what I'm interested on. I run the agent with Claude Opus 4.1, GPT-5, Grok 4, and J Germany 2.5 Pro and gave them a budget of $10,000 each and got interesting results. We're not going to look into the companies themselves because we don't know what most of them are, but what is interesting to note is that the portfolios made by Gemini 2.5 Pro and Grok 4 are their smallest ones. Gemini has 7 stocks and Grok has 5. To be honest, it seems to me that Grok just gave up because it only took 5 stocks and gave them 20% of the budget each. GPT-5 was the first one to finish with 9 stocks and the one that took the longest to finish was Claude Opus 4.1 with 13 stocks. I am betting on Claude Opus 4.1 again. Yes, I was wrong the last time, but Claude has been crushing it lately, while GPT-5 has been getting mixed reviews. Let me know in the comments which model you think picked the best stocks, and I will see you next year for an update. Don't forget to check out the AI Agents Masterclass course if you want to learn how to build AI agents like this one. We will build 10 different agents across 5 different frameworks. By the end of it, I assure you, you're gonna be an AI agent pro builder. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.